So this is a problem that we looked at in class. And we solved this problem a couple different ways, most notably substitution or elimination, um, since it is ultimately a system. I'm going to show you another method that we could use to solve this problem, and it's called augmented matrices. And it's a lead-in to um, some more material that we're going to look at this chapter. So if we've already defined x to be the number of $5 bills, and y to be the number of $1 bills, then we actually already have our equations that we looked at in class. 5x plus 1y equals 38, and that's the amount of money that she has. And that 1x equals 2y plus 1, and that's from the second equation, or the second sentence. If we rearrange these so that it's sort of set up for elimination, that will help us. So I'm going to write this second equation as x minus 2y equals to 1. And I'm going to be using these two equations as they look, at, like, look like now. So an augmented matrix, first of all, we have to put our numbers in the matrix. And I'm going to start with my coefficients, 5 and 1 from the top equation, 1 and negative 2 from the bottom equation. I like to put a little separator line here before I put the 38 and the 1. This is an augmented matrix. And you can see that the, the top three numbers simply come from the top equation, 5, 1, and 38. Here they are, 5, 1, and 38. And the bottom three numbers, 1, negative 2, and 1, come from the bottom equation, 1, negative 2, and 1. Matrices allows us to work really only with the coefficients. Now what we want to do with this augmented matrix is we want these four elements to become the multiplicative identity. And what that ultimately means is we need those four elements to look like this. 1, 0, 0, 1. That's ultimately what we need this matrix to look like. And when we do that, we'll have a number there and a number there, and those will be our solutions right there once we do all that. So there's only a few things we really can do, because ultimately these are coefficients of an equation. For example, if you look at it like this, um, one thing we could do is we could take this top equation and put it underneath this one. So that's called a row swap. I could take the 5x plus y equals 38 and put it underneath this. That's one thing we could do. Another thing we could do if we wanted to is take all three of the terms in this top equation and multiply them by whatever number we want. We could multiply all of them by 3 if we wanted to, as long as we do to all three things. Okay. Another thing we could do, um, sort of like when you're doing an uh, elimination, is we could add the two equations together, combining like terms, making 6x minus 1y equals 39. If that helped us, we could do that. A lot of times when you're solving by elimination, you might multiply temporarily one of the equations by something so that when you add it to the other equation, it eliminates one of the things. And those are the types of things we're going to do over here in our augmented matrix. If we want to start right up here, which is where we do want to start, and make this thing a 1, well, honestly, the easiest way to do that is just to move these three numbers to the top. And that's what I'm going to do first. We always want to tell, communicate our math. So I'm going to use the word swap. And I'm going to say swap row 1 and row 2. So let's see what we've got now. So swap row 1 and row 2. So row 2, the 1, negative 2, and 1, is going to come up top. And row 1, excuse me, 5, 1, and 38 is going to come down to the bottom. That's it. That's our first step. And what we did there was we got this 1 right here. Next, what we want to do is try to get this 5 to turn into a 0. Now, you might say, well, let's just multiply everything by 0. Well, that's not going to be the best idea, because then we're, it's going to be very tough to get this uh, to become what it needs to be. So I, I would hesitate to multiply anything uh, by 0. 
what we want to do is we need to add something to 5 so that it becomes a 0. And obviously, negative 5 plus 5 turns into 0. So what we want to do is, now, we're not going to uh, permanently change these numbers, but we can temporarily change these numbers so that we can add them to the bottom numbers. So I'm going to take this top one and I'm going to multiply it by negative 5. So it temporarily turns into a negative 5. Now I can't do that just for the one term, I need to do it for all three of these. So if I multiply this by negative 5, I have to multiply this by negative 5 to temporarily get a 10 and multiply this by negative 5 to temporarily get a negative 5. What I'm going to do now is, let's, let's um, put that in, in language. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make row 2 turn into 5 times row 1, excuse me, negative 5 times row 1 plus row 2. So I'm going to multiply negative 5 to all the elements in row 1 and then add them to row 2. Again, very important, that does not actually change the numbers in row 1. It temporarily changes them. Okay, So my new matrix, the top row is not changing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first thing. That's not changing. But what is changing is the bottom row. When I temporarily multiply this top row by negative 5 and then add it to this, I have a negative 5 plus a 5, which turns into 0. I temporarily have a 10, I'm adding it to the 1 to get an 11. And I temporarily have a negative 5, when I add that to 38, I get 33. So if you look back up here to what it needs to be, we need it to be a 1 and then a 0, which we have now, a 1 and then a 0. The next thing we want to turn is this 1. We want this to become a 1. So right now my eyes are on this 11. Now I've got a 0 and an 11 and a 33. And my eyes see that these two numbers are divisible by 11, such that if I just multiply this entire row by a number, 1 11th, I'll get this to be a 1. Now it's not going to change a 0, because multiplying 0 by anything is still going to be 0. So let me change color here, and I'm going to start to come this way. I'm going to change row 2, which is why I say row 2 equals. Okay, and I'm going to multiply it by 1 11th. You might say, well, why aren't you just dividing by 11? Well, that's basically the same thing, but we don't like to divide um, in matrices. So row 2 is what's going to change, which means, again, row 1 is not. So I'm going to go ahead and write row 1 all still the same. I have not changed that once I, from the original swap. 1 11th times 0 becomes 0 still. 1 11th times 11 becomes 1. And 1 11th times 33 becomes 3. So we're so close. We're about 75% of the way there. We've got our 1. We've got our 0. We've got our other 1 here. Now we need this to be a 0. So now we're going to do a very similar thing like we did over here. And we want to make this turn into a 0. So since it's already a negative 2, we're going to add a positive 2 to kind of cancel that out. So where are we going to get that positive 2? Well, there's a 1 that's right here. If I multiply this 1 by a 2, again, temporarily, it'll change to a 2. Now again, I need to do all three of these by the same number. So if I multiply this by 2, well, that's not going to change it because it's still a 0. If I multiply the 3 by a 2, it temporarily turn, changes to a 6. So now my temporary numbers are 0, 2, and 6. I just doubled everything in here. What I'm going to do with these red numbers is add them to each of the elements in the top row. And let's see what happens. Again, let's communicate what that is. Row 1 is what's changing. So I'm going to say R1 equals. And I did 2 times row 2 plus row 1. That's what I did. And let's see what this is going to look like. Row 2 did not change, so I like to, I kind of like to draw that first just to kind of get a shell of, of, of where my numbers are going to go. Okay, so now I'm adding the, the temporary numbers here in red to the top row. So 0 plus 1 is 1, and 2 plus negative 2 becomes 0, and 6 plus 1 becomes 7. So if you notice now, 
we have our multiplicative identity matrix right here. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, however you want to look at it. And since this is our multiplicative identity, I know that our solutions are right there. The top one is the value of x, so therefore there are seven $5 bills, and the bottom one is y, so therefore there are three $1 bills. It's a brand new, for, for many of you, it's a brand new way of solving a system. We're actually going to do it for three by three systems. That's three equations and three unknowns. And um, it's a whole lot easier than doing substitution and elimination, especially when you're talking about something like seven variables um, in seven different equations. So that's why we use augmented matrices, and we'll see you later.